Hi and welcome to the first video in what I hope will be a series of videos uh, exploring what you can do with the Glam Workbench. Uh, in this first video we're going to look at how you can visualize your searches in Trove's digitized newspapers and we're going to be making use of the latest version of a tool that I created more than 10 years ago, um, a thing called Query Pick. Okay let's just dive straight into Trove and no doubt you're all familiar with Trove, 200 million, more than 200 million digitized newspaper articles from 1803 onwards. Uh, we're just going to search for, oh, not radio, but radio, um, and see what we get back. Now, um, you might be wondering, okay, you know, this is all familiar, I know how to use this, why would I want to visualize it? What, what benefit does that give me? Um, and I'd sort of point to a couple of things. So the first one is this number here. Three and a half million search results. My query returns three and a half million results. You know, it's just really hard to get your head around. I mean, what does that mean? And, and the other point is that if you're using the Trove web interface, you only ever see the first 2,000 results. So that means there's a huge amount of dark matter sort of living behind the Trove web interface that we don't get to see. So one reason for visualizing it is to see all of that dark matter, to see everything in our search results, to see all three and a half million search results. Another reason is, you know, the way we use these sorts of things. I mean, we're familiar with going through a list of results and we, you know, look at each result. We might sort them or filter them or whatever um, until we find something that's relevant, that's useful. And then we save that article. But if we start to visualize this search, look at the data underlying that query, we can start to ask different types of questions. So instead of focusing on, in, on individual items, we can look at the whole lot and see how the number of articles, for example, changes over time, or by newspaper, or by state. You know, then we can start to explore that result set, slice it up in different ways, and see what that might tell us. It's, you know, it raises a whole different sorts of, of historical questions that we can ask of that result set. Okay, so to visualize, we're going to go to the Glam Workbench, click on Trove, click on Trove Newspapers. So this loads up the Trove Newspapers section. Um, over here, you can see there's visualizing searches and query pick at the top there. I'm not going to talk about what these different links here do today. That will save that for another exciting video. Um, but I'm just going to click on this one that says run live on Binder in Voila. And uh, click on it and voila. Uh, this is Binder. So this service Binder is spinning up a comp computing environment for us, right? It's installing all the software that we need in the cloud and then it's loading up Query Pick. Um, Query Pick, I mean, just looks like a web app. Um, underneath the hood, it's something called a Jupyter Notebook, but again, we'll save that exciting detail for another video. So here we have the Query Pick interface, and we need two pieces of information to visualize a search. One is a Trove API key, and, and the other is the URL of a search. So first of all, the Trove API key. You need to get that from Trove, obviously. If you've got a Trove user account, it's just a matter of going to a developer tab, filling in a few boxes and clicking a button, and you can get your API key. Um, so I'm just going to go to my uh, profile and I'm just going to copy the API key. Uh, I have to try and hide it from you. Um, paste it into that box there, uh, and we're right to go. So now we just go back to our search here, search for radio. Um, all I'm going to do is just copy that URL. Just control C it, command C it, go back to query pick, paste that URL. Now, this is quite a simple search, obviously. We've just done a, a simple search for the keyword radio, but it can be as complex as you want. You can use advanced search, you can use the different facets in Trove to filter your results in different sorts of ways. It's still just a matter of copying the URL and pasting it into the box. Query pick will do all the rest. It will, it will look at the parameters in that URL and it will structure the visualization accordingly. So we're just going to click on visualize query. Now what's happening down here is that um, uh, query pick is making a number of requests to Trove. And in fact, you can see it's making 23 requests to Trove. 
Um, and uh, this is because it's, it's working across the whole uh, date range of Trove from 1803 to the present day. Uh, and it's making one request for every decade in that time period. Uh, and within that decade, it's getting back the number of results per year. And then when it gets all those results, it sort of puts them all back together uh, and shows you the complete result set over time. Now this is possible because Trove makes its data available through a thing called an API, an application programming interface. And all that means it's delivering its data in a, in a way that it's easy for computer programs to understand. So you know, APIs for computers, web interfaces for people, deliver the same sorts of information but in a different form. So we've nearly assembled all of that data. There it is. Okay, so we've now got our chart. So this is our three and a half million results all displayed in a single chart. Uh, and we can see that uh, the appearance of the word radio sort of uh, takes off after 1920. Now, an important thing to note here. Um, so if we m put our mouse over any of these points here, we see that there were 95,000 results in 1934. Now, this is not the number of times the word radio appeared in newspapers. This is the number of articles that included the word radio. Okay, so it's the number of articles returned by our search, not the number of words. There are ways of, you know, searching the complete text of newspaper articles and finding the number of words, but that's a, a, a much uh, longer process and we can explore that in a, a future topic. So these are the number of articles. Now one thing uh, you might notice, as well as radio taking off in the 1920s, is that there was a dramatic fall in radio in the 1950s. My goodness, what happened? Is this the impact of television? No, of course not. Um, you might guess that it's all to do with copyright. Uh, if you are familiar, if you are you know um, familiar with Trove, you know that uh, most of the newspapers stop in 1954 because of copyright. So there's just fewer newspapers, fewer newspaper articles. Therefore, our results drop away after 1954. This raises another question, though, doesn't it? Because um, you know our results here are very much dependent on the number of newspapers and the number of newspaper articles. And, you know. Are the raw number of articles here really very useful in looking at historical trends? Uh, we might just be seeing, um, you know, the, 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 the number of newspapers which have been uh, digitized vary over time rather than anything to do with our actual search query. One way that we can uh, examine that is through this little box here, which enables us to switch from the raw number of results to the proportion of articles. So. When we mouse over here now, for example, uh, we can see in 1943 there were 125,000 results. Um, but what it does here is it compares the number of results matching our query with the total number of newspaper articles for that year. Uh, and in fact, we can see that there were actually 5% of articles in 1943 included the word radio. So that can be a bit more useful in sort of examining the impact or the occurrence of particular words. Now, one of the, the really useful things about QueryPick is not that you just get to see all of your results, but you can actually compare queries. So um, if we go back to Trove here, if we change this query now to Telegraph, um, once again, I'm just going to grab the search query, the URL, uh, take it back to query pick, um, paste it into the box, and click on visualize this query again. Um, so once again, it's going off and it's getting a result for each decade. Now you can, in this latest version of query pick, actually change the time unit or the, the scale. I mean, by default, Query pick will look at the range of your query. Uh, in this case, we didn't set any date range, so it's just going across the whole of Trove, 1803 to the present day. But you can, if, it, if you uh, search for um, a, 
a, a, a, a more limited time frame, um, say you search for just a year, you will see the results by month, for example. Or if you search for a month, you will see the results by day. So Query Pick again adjusts the unit that it uses according to the time scale of your query. Now in a future video, we'll look at this in a bit more detail and how you can um, change that. But here we can see that our wireless uh, query has been visualized so we've got in orange here we've got wireless in blue we've got radio we can see you know interesting sort of period in which these things are crossing over the technologies are shifting uh, and the usage is changing in the newspapers now um, and we can of course see uh, get that again as a, as a proportion of total articles um, rather than the raw numbers we're still getting that same uh, crossover period now one thing I always say when we're looking at these sorts of things is that these are not arguments in themselves, right? Um, you know, what they point to are interesting questions in themselves. So having seen that we're getting that sort of shift in that period, we might want to dive in there um, and have a look in a bit more detail about what's going on. Um, and in fact, one way you can do that is simply by clicking on the chart itself. So you can see here, um, so if we wanted to look uh, what was happening with radio in 1930 I can just click on that point and it goes back to Trove um, and it simply just loads up uh, that query it loads up the query for radio limiting it to um, 1930 was it um, you can see here 1930 so that enables us to look at what's happening at any point on that chart to get a sense of what's going on underneath that uh, that large-scale visualization we can zoom out to see the big picture and we can then dive back in again to see what's happening at any particular point um, another useful thing you can do here with uh, query pick is to save your results of course so um, there are a few different ways you can save your results um, you can save the data which is underlying it so if you want the data out as a, uh, a CSV file that's a spreadsheet you can just click on that link and it will download the data um, uh, you can also save the chart itself uh, and you've got again a couple of options here one you can choose from over here and save it as, a, as an image file a PNG file for example um, another one here is to save your chart as, a, as an HTML file um, and you can adjust the width and the height, just click on the button um, and it will have uh, an HTML version that you can download. Okay, so that's a very brief introduction to what you can do with Query Pick. As I said, um, things get a lot more uh, complex from there in terms of the types of queries that you might construct using Trove um, and uh, the way you can adjust the timescales. But I think we'll save that for another video. Um, I hope this encourages you to have a bit of a play with Query Pick and see what interesting things you can find.